arcades were there and were, were attracting an audience, but I mean, the, the game changer was the Sinclair Spectrum computer. That was the first computer that really created a mass platform in the UK. And despite that funny little rubber keyboard, people started writing games and making money and there was a, a whole market quickly opened up. Spectrum was probably the most important thing that happened to video games in this country. I think it's probably the most important thing that happened to programming in this country. I'm not going to underplay the significance of the Commodore 64. It was very relevant. But we had Sir Clive. You've got to thank Clive Sinclair for what he did for the games industry. You know, you've got, you've got to appreciate we'd never seen the likes of it before. It was Sir Clive Sinclair. I don't think he got knighted because of that little sort of electric car thing that he came up with. This was because of, of the Spectrum. I mean, a lot of things came together with Spectrum. You know, Sinclair did a great job of distribution. You could get it everywhere. Everyone had one. If it wasn't for Sir Clive Sinclair, looking at what computers could be and understanding that they had to be affordable, we would not have the industry we, we all grew up to because for £100 or whatever, you could have a computer in your home. The release of the Sinclair Spectrum was the major event of the... British games industry at the time. It was the first computer I think that was both accessible in terms of price to people like me and could actually be a platform for relatively sophisticated games because you, you actually had a huge amount of memory on the, on the 48k model. You know 40k you could use for your program and data. This was amazing. It was cheap and it was powerful and you could do a lot with it. When I saw the ads for the Spectrum and I thought, right, I'm going to get one of the first Spectrums, I'm going to disassemble that, find out how it works and be one of the first to do it. So I was determined to be one of the pioneers. When Spectrum came out, you know, all of a sudden you had colour, you had sound, I mean it was brilliant sound but you still had sound and you had um, higher resolution pixels so you could actually get a sprite to look like what it should do rather than a big massive pixel. And most importantly it had the reliable tape load in so that opened up some huge avenues for me so I could now write programs and save them. It was an interesting time because before that people like me who are really lame artists could totally stay undercover. I just had to do simple little blobs and things so I was good to go but the spectrum is where it started to go where you could plot every dot and I could see wow you know your graphics are just terrible David. It was a moment where I realized I'm going to need help here. I'm not going to be able to get away with this much longer. Um, I need to get some art help. That was the moment I think when teams formed like suddenly there was the concept of we have to have a team here. 48k to write a game these days uh, a program would use up 48k in 10 minutes just one line of code and that's so you had to write the whole thing and you had to get up to all sorts of tricks and that's why the spectrum games particularly I think got more better and better more and more sophisticated as the programmers learnt more and more tricks uh, to do it. There are still so many programmers from that era who benefited from the lack of restraints in that original Spectrum 48K design, in my opinion. I think the, the thing about the American hardware was that it was designed around constraints. You had a number of sprites, you had a number of colors, you had uh, display list interrupts, you had all this hardware stuff, right? But the Spectrum was just RAM, processor, screen, off you go. I mean, to begin with, there's not really any sound, you know? Um, and that, for me, just completely lifted the lid off the creativity of British programmers. You know, remember when they first announced it? We thought, 48K, that's beyond the dreams of avarice. How are you ever going to fill that memory? But people did. And that, that high memory bar allowed the likes of Ultimate Play the Game, Imagine, many, many other publishers and developers to create some of the most creative games the world has ever seen. What Clive Sinclair said is that every home was going to have a computer, that entertainment on computers with the computer games would be a huge, major entertainment force. Now, he was laughed at almost, but that stuck with me because I thought already you could see the kind of Moore's law of doubling of speed and halving of price starting to come in now. And, you know, my imagination was saying, you know, one day 
you know, I, this, this thing's going to be pretty, pretty powerful. So it was a real feeling of this was the start of something that was going to be big. It just captured the imagination of, of every kid in the country, I think. And it was really a UK phenomenon. I think someone said at one stage there was probably 100,000 developers, teenage bedroom developers uh, working on the, the ZX. And I think that was the, that was the one, that was the, the catalyst that opened the, you know, the doors. And I think firmly set the precedence for what was to uh, you know, arrive in the next few years.